Hi guys, welcome to Confession Sessions. I'm your host, Ryan McLaughlin. You guys know how this goes. Today I have a special guest from the book Fahrenheit 451. Welcome, Guy Montag. Alright, so as you probably already know, as you've agreed to come on, we have some rules that our guests have to follow and that our listeners also have to follow to make this a pleasant time for everyone. This is a safe place where we just want to hear your truth and honest thoughts, whether it's your thoughts or what actually happened, because here we consider both sides of the story, because if you only hear one side of the story, you have no understanding at all. Okay, got it? Let's get this show started by... I'm so excited to have this guest on after the past few guests from your book. Please give a warm welcome to Guy Montag. Hi, thank you so much for having me. My voice sounds so weird in this microphone, but I really like your studio setup. Thank you. Okay, let's get things rolling here. So Guy, you're the main character of our story, and we really just watch you from being stable to going completely off the rails. (laughs) I guess you could say that. I just want to know first, and I'm betting other people wonder too, what happened at the end? I can't really say anything other than what you know, but I would say the the ending is a little confusing for some. I escape out of the city and am welcomed into this camp of survivors who are devoted to memorizing and reciting books, and I hope to go and become just like them one day and memorize certain biblical books and embody the book of Revelation. All right, now, I also want to know about Mildred. Did she die in the explosion, or is she somewhere safe? I'm honestly not sure of her location these days, but I don't think she's physically dead. But spiritually, spiritually, she's been dead for a while. She is so obsessed with her parlor walls, addicted to sleeping pills, and lives a meaningless, unhealthy lifestyle. I think her overdosing on those pills wasn't an accident, and I think she truly wanted to die before any of this even happened. That's a very interesting perspective. Now, speaking of death, I want to touch on a point very emotional and a dramatic scene, and that is when you held the flamethrower towards Captain Beatty. What was going through your mind at that very moment? And just explain what happened there. What I later realized was that Beatty wanted to die. That doesn't at all justify what I did, and I regret murdering Beatty, as I acted irrationally against Beatty, perceiving him as a representation of the ill of his society, and I recognize that now. But in the heat of the moment, I was scared and mad at him for making me burn down my home and private collection of books, and now arresting me. But I also feared for favor, and wanted to protect him from suffering the same fate. That is a very bold statement to make, and I respect it. Moving on, I want to talk about your relationship with Clarice. Do you know what really happened to her? I don't know what happened to her, other than that she was killed in a car accident. She was a huge part in my realization. She helped me realize the ills of society and that there are greater joys out there than just staring at a screen all day. She wasn't afraid of me like most, which caught me by surprise. I I enjoyed talking to her, and yes, my wife was correct. If I never talked to her, I would have never noticed her disappearance. But I did talk to her and get to know her, and I did notice her missing, and I miss her. Huge thanks to Audible for sponsoring this podcast. Guys, Audible, I'm so excited to talk about Audible. They're one of my favorite sponsors, and for those of you who don't know, Audible is an app that you can download for free. That's right, for free, from the iTunes store. Then you can listen to an unlimited selection of books. They have all my favorite books and more. They're great to listen to during long car rides, doing chores, and right before bed, which is what I do. And use my favorite feature, the timer, which is just one of the great features they have to offer. You can get five free audiobooks today if you sign up and use my code Confession Sessions Five. That's five free audiobooks. That's Confession Sessions Five today. Enjoy listening. That's super deep and must have been difficult. Now I want to ask you about your prior life. What made you want to become a firefighter, and where do you think you would be now if you continued on that path? I first became a firefighter because it was a prestigious job in our society. For 10 years, I enjoyed my job, feeling strong and powerful as I watched books burn. My position always allowed me a degree of freedom. I get to see the forbidden books that are being burned. It made me feel important. As for the future, I was training for Captain Beatty's job. That was our final question. Thank you so much for joining us today. I had a great time talking to you about your story, your character, and your character development in the book. Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. 
Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you had as great as an experience as I did, and we can walk away with some serious points to consider. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Confession Sessions with your host, Riley McLaughlin.